is my god this show never stops being creepy <laughs> Yep. Yeah, this episode was really, really good. I was, I was definitely on the edge of my seat, like watching with bated breath through the whole episode. <laughs> um, I felt so unprepared for the debut. I felt just like Emilico, like, oh no, this happened so fast, and we haven't prepared at all. Um, yeah, I don't know. What did you guys think? I mean, I was less. Uh, I guess just the whole thing of like Mia and Sarah just really creeped me out. Like that was the, oh, the when he beat her and stuff. And... Yeah, that was the highlight. I didn't really yeah. care much about that debut. I thought it was okay but like just that scene is really like was like, all i thought about this episode yeah, and, and also the, think... the judge too the judge is so creepy yeah edward or whatever his name is the eyes um, he's got a bad case of crazy eyes yeah he's got some eyes that'll kill you know one mm -hmm. one one bad look from him and it's over <laughs> um no i agree with taylor i was i was pretty excited this episode of you know getting to the debut and, and seeing you know mm -hmm. this very Mis mystery event that's been hyped up you know this entire season of like all right we're preparing for the debut like everything rides on this and then they get into the debut and nobody knows like what to do they're all just kind of like scrambling you know even the the shadow lords and their living dolls are kind of just like you know even the ones that we think i guess that are more i guess pro quote unquote prepared they're stumbling and i love the way that they use like the rankings where he had like the little uh mm -hmm. shelves and he'd you know drop like the little uh marionette like type dolls or whatever you call them um, but I really enjoyed seeing the different shadow counterparts as well, like earlier in the episode where, you know, we, we saw a little bit of, um, John Patrick and, and Ricky, Don, yeah, John and Sean, the John and Sean threw me off where, uh, John like made Sean kiss him on the cheek or whatever. And I was, was just like, I, wait, I did know. he make him kiss him on the cheek or did he just do it on his own? No, I thought he did it on his own. He just do it on his own. It is on his own. Okay. Because, uh, yeah. it was more so something of just like, was that, was that, I was, I was like, was that a trained, like, Thing where you know we obviously Ron, don't know enough Ron about was, john and john Ron was saying how like not even you know like mm -hmm. her, i heard her master's name she says she never she doesn't even let mm -hmm. me like kiss her good night whatever so i think it's just like a thing that living dolls are expected Something to do that they're... okay we never saw yeah. it with amilica yeah the Kate, only reason i guess so... it threw me off is because the other thing with john is he was wearing the glasses right and sean was mm -hmm. like you know oh where are your or john was saying oh sean why aren't you wearing your glasses and he's like well we don't wear glasses and he's like oh right like that was something that you know, I just did to be like unique or whatever. So John's definitely a unique shadow lord of sorts. And then Patrick, I could care for less because Patrick's just an equal scumbag He's, like I think, Ricky. I think Taylor's so. the one to call him Draco Malfoy. He definitely has like the Draco Malfoy vibe this episode. My God. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he even um, looks like him. Like, yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> that right, out the, the comb over and oh. everything. So um, I really do like. I my one little tiny tiny gripe. This is and this is like not even a thing. This is me trying to find a problem, okay? Like it's so small. But like it kind of threw me off with John how like when we see the the interaction between him and Sean in their quarters, John seems pretty chill. Like he seems almost like a like a comedic character. Like to, he I yeah. he felt very laid back to me and it seemed like he was really attached with Sean, like he really liked him and they got along. Um and then when it got to the debut, I kept on getting thrown off because John was kind of coming at the arbiter. Um, Edward, I think his name was, right? Mm -hmm. yep. He was kind of coming at him like a couple of times when Edward wouldn't give them like instructions for what they were supposed to do. He like called him out on um, only being a living doll and he sh they shouldn't be taking orders from him anyways. And it just felt a little bit odd to me since like Ricky and Patrick were right there and they're kind of like the token assholes of the group. So it just Definitely. felt like I couldn't like get a read on John's pers uh, personality. So that kind of irked me. But that was it. That's like my first grade well, of the season. I was gonna say, I mean, I, it, that's, it just sounds like John is really attached to his doll, and I guess like that's like part of it. That part of the chill personality, you say. And then, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I don't blame him for like being yeah. pissed off at the arbiter because like, because because I would be mad too in his position if he didn't know what was going on for like this important thing that they didn't get any instructions with. So. Yeah. I really, but it's it almost makes me nervous because I don't want him to get them kicked out, or I don't want him to make yeah. them fail because he's being a jerk. Because I like them. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? Is it almost seems like Edward doesn't want them to, to succeed because you know he's obviously yeah. raised to this rank of you know not needing a um a shadow figure because that was something mm -hmm. that they had asked like, hey, where's your shadow figure? And he's like, oh, I don't need that. Like I'm a special class of living doll and all this mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and I think even specifically there was one moment during the dance where, um ricky and patrick didn't seem to do anything wrong with like the dance they were doing and like edward like angrily like moved them down like a ring yeah 
And it's just kind of like, you know, what was the rationale get. for that? Yeah, it I was still... almost like they were doing too well. And he was just like, yeah. he's like, how are you doing too well? Like, that's not going to stand. Like, I control everything and just like, well, you know, moved him down out of like spite. The only thing I could think of was that there was a comment that somebody made about how uh, Ricky was almost the one leading Patrick yeah. sometimes. That's that's the only thing I think. Okay. Was, it's like is that, what, it, that was Kate, right? When Kate was like freaking out and trying to see like, oh, been. they're doing this. They're doing that. And they're like, OK, how can I? you know, get a Milico to kind of get with the program, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah. I'm so. glad that Kate was, like, not hard on Emilico. Like, she was a little bit because I think it was a stressful situation. So, like, just in general, she was stressed out. I mean, we, we can tell, right? Out. The soot was, like, constantly yeah. coming from her head, like, this entire episode. <laughs> but it wasn't, like... But I like that we got to hear into her thoughts by the end of the episode where she was talking about how she actually really does like Emilico a lot. She likes that unique like personality trait that she has that makes her herself and i i thought that i really liked that because i was a little bit scared that this was just that she was like gonna turn on her i guess a little bit or become mm. a little bit more unlikable or unrelatable I, as I a character too yeah um so i was really pleased to hear the thoughts that she had because <laughs> i want to like kind of like support them as friends it feels like they have a good relationship going on. And I want to continue to see that develop. But I could kind of see that turning to a conflict later, though, because like, yeah. because a miracle is starting to, is too much of her own person instead of mm -hmm. reflecting her on her shadow. So I can definitely mm -hmm. see that coming an issue later. Mm -hmm. So what what do you think is going to be like the the next part of this test here? Because you know, with the episode ending, we have Edward leading all the shadow it, royals outside of the room so and locking sketchy. all the dolls in there. It's well because the the name of the, the preview of the, of the next episode title is called the Sh the Garden Labyrinth. So it just it just feels oh, like oh I didn't see that. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing with the shadow. I don't know why like he would put if they're gonna be put in individual tests or not or or if it's like the dolls are just being watched. Mm. So, I wonder then. Do you think like the dolls may like the door may eventually unlock and then the dolls have to maybe find their shadow counterparts within this labyrinth? I just or have, I just have this bad feeling because like how um. What was it uh like Pat, Pat Patrick like was like he was being mad at at the judge and like he was saying you know why is this doll treating this shadow why is he treating the shadow like this and then he seemed it seemed like he fought up for it a little bit but then like it just sounds like later when he opened the door like like he's it felt like he was so in control and it, it just felt like so mm -hmm. sketchy that like like he he's not doing it as like as a favor for them it sounds like it's part of like the the debut trial where so i don't know, i don't have any good feelings about them mm. being separated and going to the, the garden so yeah no i think the other last two kind of things for me is one i'm interested to finally see what uh rum's shadow counterpart is like where you know is she just really kind of quiet and soft-spoken like rum and potentially it's a reverse dynamic where rum as the living doll is actually the one kind of leading things along and gets, you know, the shadow figure to come out of her shell, so to speak. Um, and then the only other thing that I was going to update was when I was reading the um, Reddit thread for this week's episode, um, there was one gripe that I noticed pretty regularly surrounding the veiled dolls. Apparently, the way that they introduced it into the anime here was much earlier and in a different manner than they do in the manga. So uh -huh. um, it does look like there are some some liberties being taken. Um, but nothing yet that's been too drastic, but it was something that I did commonly notice. So mm. something to, well, uh, I guess, keep in mind and hopefully not, you know, let it deter from our kind of enjoyment that we've been having from the anime. But it's definitely something I think when we talk later about Tokyo Revengers, it'll be kind of an interesting discussion of, you know, keeping things oh, true okay. to the source material. Um, I'll, I'll also say too, um, uh, I wonder, I don't know, like, what the rule is for the debut like if it's made it sound like if you don't get it sounds like what there's maybe one person picked for the debut and then if you don't get picked your your dolls get eliminated uh, so yeah there we, was some there was some chatter about that one? earlier i don't know if it's well just one. it was kind of implied it wasn't like, like said flat out but it, that was the feeling i think who was it hmm. that was talking during uh, that I think it was Do you remember rum was saying how like oh we don't succeed here like this is just my last chance to be, be anything why bother? Mm -hmm. Like I could be friends with a miracle, but like I'm just we're just not gonna pass anyway. So I and I took it as if like, oh, are they just gonna be like thrown away if they don't lead here the debut? Yeah. So I, don't I know. almost feel like nobody can fail because it's like so early on and like such a 
focused cast of characters like unless the debut is going to last a little bit longer like a few more episodes but yes just, just going off the opening and everything alone like they prominently show you know these five different pairs of shadow figure just, living dolls like i think it would be way too early to try to write like any of them yeah out. we just don't we don't know the rules but like because but right now like kate and Emilico, they're not doing so well in the debut but i can't see Emilico failing and like and getting like replaced or anything so do know. we know if shadows can fail like can shadow lords be disposed of because honestly they don't seem to be treated mm. all that much better than the dolls like they seem uh, just as I feel like the, yeah that's a good question i feel like there is a different like ranking even for the shadow figure yeah. i just feel like they're well. like there's like it's true that like people are sort of like how you went like dispose of you know, like if you fail the test you want to like, dispose of a person whereas like the doll is more of like a product so you would just like i feel like you just throw it away if, you, if they fail mm -hmm. and you get re you get like a replacement mm -hmm. living doll to maybe debut again of your of your shadow that's what i think yeah i guess the thing is like we still don't really know like the scale of shadow's house like they've mm -hmm. obviously it's, alluded to it being much larger than we know with huge. like barbie and the starberries yeah. yeah exactly so Mm -hmm. it feels like a city like it fe it doesn't feel like right? just like a house like it feels yeah. like a large community yeah so. it's almost like a a hogwarts i guess and i only mm -hmm. say that because like the the train that's at like the ending and like the whole thing that's in like the snow yeah. globe type focus well, and but... like there's so many living dolls i, I can't imagine to be like shadows for all of them unless it is unless that's why the house is so big because there's that many shadows that i don't think oh, there are shadows for each of yeah them. i was gonna say yeah. maybe you just could regulated to like the cleaning crew then maybe it's just like that sounds like a better life it, i'd rather just be a cleaner just like, do my cleaning and be done for the day <laughs> like rum made it sound yeah. so like made it sound so bad like if you don't get it made it sound she made she implied that it sounded like you get disposed of so i'm just going with what she said so i'm curious yeah. to see how the rest rum of the definitely knows was. more than he's letting on he's kind of serving as this character to further expose like the inner rulings of the shadow house so no, it's just, can we it's, go back to oh, um yeah oh, sorry go ahead no, no, you go ahead um i was just gonna say can we go back to uh, what are their names mia and sarah, sarah? yeah mm -hmm. what okay so did i see that right did she go in and ask her shadow master to beat her is that how that happened because she like basically like she was I think reading it's more of like and she walked in and she's like i want to get better i want to learn more and then her master beat her right I that's think, i don't think it's just her willing asking i think she she expects it to happen. So I think it's, just, yeah, it's just happened so many like, times where it's like, you come back, it's like, all right, beating time. Like, it, words don't need to be like, said. That like, just is the relationship. It's probably, they... like, in the beginning, she probably, like, I don't know. What's the word? Like, she probably um, did it first, and then, like, like yeah, I find that, which, which was who, but, like, the doll probably was caught off guard, and then, like, the the shadow probably, like, like beat her first and says, like, this is what you sh should be expecting. And then she just got like, got trained in that way. So then like, that's what she expects from now on. That's what I took from that. Yeah. I just realized we haven't talked about like, uh, Luis and Lou, that pair. They're so cute. <laughs> yeah. Where they're kind of like the cutesy, you know, Luis is explaining, oh, your shadow should be, you know, like a nickname of yourself. So that's why you have Luis and Lou. And then, you know, her doing the makeup and stuff. And then, you know, she touches her and gets like the sudden, she's like, oh no, like we have to redo yeah, well, it. So it's like, like. Her, like Luis and and like and John, are like they're like the most normal shadow of all of them. So yeah, they're definitely a more a more healthy kind of uh, relationship between yeah. the two. But mm -hmm. I guess I was trying to think to go back quickly to <laughs> Sarah and Mia. Um, I guess this is the assumption then, like when I can't remember either day they which one's the doll or not. <laughs> but when when the doll comes back and she opens her room and she sees like all of like the soot marks yeah. everywhere. Is the assumption and then, that like and now that stuffed animal ripped apart too? And yeah, is the assumption well. that like when the doll <laughs> is gone, like Sarah's just like fucking up her room, or is it that like even at night, like she goes in there and she's beating the shit? I don't like, know. Out of this doll. I, I don't know. Like that's like part of the mystery is like what's the deal with the two of them? Like, or why? Yeah. Why is like, yeah, why is the shadow so like, like I like have so much animosity against yeah. this doll. I can kind of see. I feel like, like we're really only seeing the tip of the iceberg with like these the, two. Yeah. <laughs> the scene we saw with her like beating her, the doll, I can see, I can kind of see that as like as like this shadow really just treats her as like a product as a thing. So I can kind of yeah. see where Mas master and servant. Where is that? Where's like but the whole like mess up the room part? I don't get that thing. Like I don't. 
understand what's the point or what's like yeah her, right what's her it's almost goal. like some some jealousy of some sorts in a weird way but like taylor said definitely have only touched the tip of the iceberg and it's done a damn good job of you know really making you curious as to like what the hell is going on here <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i love this show i like it a lot yeah it's sad that it's it's still pretty low in the rankings i know i just looked else. at the score and it was like seven something i was like yeah. this show is like I mean, okay, everybody has their different tastes, but for me, this is like oh. easily my favorite show of the. From, I, well, I don't know, it's I, this or Two Year Eternity, but I think I actually like this more than I Two Year Eternity. For me, it's like, I don't know, like it's just not my type of show, so I can understand mm -hmm. like other people's. Like, I wouldn't rate it that low, but like I, I can understand how um, it's not like yeah, everyone's cup of tea. So, like, I think like just the more I think it's a, it's an interesting like dynamic. For I th sure. I think like I'm just like some people could probably find it too cutesy. I think like, the slice of life thing is just slice like it just like stuff. it doesn't fit in with me. Just like because I want to see more of the creepy stuff, but I just feel like there. I guess I mean I know it's meant to like they're, they're meant to conflict with each other, the slice of life and the creepy stuff. But like I think I think if I was reading the manga, it it'd be like it would um like the creepy factor would sink in more just because like I feel like it's leaning too much on the slice of, slice of life. But that's just. That's my opinion, so. I feel like the marketing for the show wasn't super fantastic. Like, if Justin yeah. hadn't said that he was watching it, and if he hadn't com specifically compared it to The Promised Neverland, I never would have touched this show. Because, speaking of cutesy things, the second I saw the cute girls on the front, done. I would have passed on it just <laughs> from that. And then, like, number two, even if I did get to the PV, I thought the PV looked pretty, like, amateur. Um, mm -hmm. And then, like, on top of that, like, the slice of life tag. I don't see this as a slice of life at all, like, in any capacity. Because, like, if you were to see it, if you were to, like, again, compare it to Promise Neverland, there's times where they're just doing laundry or, like, playing hide and seek or whatever in that show, too. It gets less as the show progresses, admittedly, and they know what's going on. But, like, they had those elements there, too. But that is not a slice of life. No, and I feel but... like this one hasn't gotten as dark as that yet, but I feel like it's leading I up still... to possibly being that I dark. I still kind of see it as, like, supernatural slice of life. So. Really? Yeah. I, just, I don't know. I've seen, there's, like, there's plenty of, like, at least mangas where it's, like, where it's just, like, people living normal lives, but it's, like, in a supernatural setting. But even though there's a lot of creepy stuff happening here, it's all, like... It's half and half, so but I can see like mm -hmm. I still describe it as, like as a half slice of life. Mm. Got it. Yeah. But yeah, we will see where we go from here. Quite yeah. a lot of the mystery. <laughs>